Hey there, my name is Peyton Macy's and you're listening to AnyCast. AnyCast is about anything and everything. We have some cool guests on sometimes, or sometimes it's just me. But enjoy today's episode and I hope you learn something new. Welcome on back to any cast, you guys. Oh, this is going to be a lot of fun today. Um, For those of you that haven't been keeping up, the month is March. It is March 1st, I know. January for me was a little bit slow. Most of February was a little bit slow. But once the anniversary hit, everything just was kind of like, boom, the floodgates were open. And boom, I just, it's just like rush and on rush, you know. Um, so, you know, time has been flying by. I can't believe we're already in the third month of the year. We are closing uh, or we're close to the end of the first quarter. Um, we are also close to the three year anniversary of COVID. Um, just another random thing, you know, that always pops in my head now. Um St. Patrick's Day was actually the last day in public school for me. Um, St. Patrick's Day 2020 until I stepped into a public school building um, in August of 2021. Late August, practically September. So, or sorry, not 2021, 2022. Um, So yeah, kind of crazy stuff. But anyways, we're not talking about that. No, we are talking about UNO today. If you... um, now, the reason I bring up why it's March is because March is our board game origins mo- month. Now, there are, before we even get into the board game origins stuff and me talking about that, I actually wanted to do a couple of announcements and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I just wanted to, you know, do some good old... Um, announcement time and really the biggest thing is i need to update you guys on what is going on with any cast and any cast of videos what are some things for you guys to look out for this has kind of been the thing that i do now every single time um so yeah 12 hours ago i did say that not well, actually the sunday the day before metallica mondays on March 12th, we're going to be doing an album review of the new, or actually the old Elevation Rhythm album that released a year ago called Growing Pains. So on March 12th, we're going to be doing an album review. And then of course, on March 13th, we're going to be doing an album review of Metallica's Kill Em All, kicking off Metallica Mondays. So that's just a couple of different things. Another thing you guys might want to go check out, I'll probably link this down below is I took the Hogwarts house quiz and I put up a poll. It's my most interaction on the community tab I think I've ever gotten. I said, what's your Hogwarts house? And 50% said Ravenclaw, 0% Hufflepuff, 33% Slytherin, and 17% Gryffindor. And I got the house. I made a video and I got um, I got Ravenclaw. Uh, you can re watch the video. It's only it's less than 15 minutes at 13 minutes. Actually, it's a very short video. Uh, I cut it right to the chase. Um, I made a cool little uh, intro for any fantasy videos. Uh, so that's there um, in that video. And, you know, that's there. Um, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool video. I think you guys would like it. Um, I play some Harry Potter type music in the background on a lower volume. So I think the, you know, even though it was just a simple recording for me, um, and I decided to do a screen share and take a quiz, I made it pretty 
it sets the vibe of Harry Potter, I think, with the music in the background. So I thought it was a pretty fun video. And I got to find out my uh, uh, my house, which is Ravenclaw. And if you don't know what Ravenclaw is, then you guys can go and watch the video and learn at the very end what is Ravenclaw. Because each house has its own, um, its own, I guess you could say, values. Its own, val yeah, values is a pretty good way of saying it. So like Slytherin, they're kind of like the sly, the slick, the mischievous, and the lying ones. You know, very dark in spirit. Gryffindor is very courageous and bold and brave. Hufflepuff is definitely a peacemaking type, if I remember correctly. And then Ravenclaw. I was very happy that I got Ravenclaw, actually. I didn't really want Gryffindor. I kind of just wanted Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff. Or not, sorry. Sorry, not Hufflepuff. I would have hated to have Hufflepuff. Um, but this was a pretty accurate quiz. And the only two houses I, I wanted was Slytherin because, you know, it'd be kind of cool to be in Slytherin. But, you know, I didn't really want that because that means, you know, you're pretty much destined to be evil. Um, but you can be very intelligent. But I got Raymond Claw, and I was like, okay, good. That, that suits me. So the quiz was pretty accurate, I believe. Another big thing I would like you guys to be looking out for is today is March 1st, um, as I've said multiple times already. And as you guys know, like I've been saying, every single Wednesday on the podcast for the next, but well, all, all March, we're going to be doing a new board game origin. Today is Uno. It's going to be a shorter episode of the actual origin because it's a very short story. That's kind of why I'm giving you guys all these announcements, but also I've been doing this lately and I kind of like this because really every single week I do have announcements but um I would say probably on the hmm probably on the 17th or 24th I will be having a video now this video will be me quitting something that I've been doing I'm not gonna say what that is it's going to be a, probably a long video. It's going to be kind of me staring into a camera and talking. I'm going to put it up on the podcast. I think it will be better on the podcast as well. And so, you know, it'll be here on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to your podcast and also on YouTube. And this is going to be a very important thing for you guys. I don't think it's going to greatly affect you guys to like a huge degree, but it is going to affect you. Um some other things i wanted to announce was sorry that i didn't get my um harry potter movie review up um i don't think i actually will do those i think i'll just do a tier list at the end and then compare them to the books um um that's all i really have you for you there uh and i did want to give a shout out to our friend over actually our friends over at fansnotexperts.com uh if you do not know fans.experts.com i'll be linking that down below you can go there um mike he is the host of multiple podcasts he is the host of um his most famous podcast uh being um stranger danger stranger danger is a stranger things podcast i've talked about it a lot of different times but Mike gave us a nice shout out, a very nice shout out on his show. He watched my film with his sound clips in it, the Anycast Journey. He watched it and all that fun stuff. Um, and he had a very positive review. But before we even play the sound clip of what he said, I just want to tell you, you know, here, I'm going to list four of his podcasts that I think you guys might be interested in. These are some of his more mainstream and big ones. So, or actually, I guess three. Um, so firstly, he has a lot of podcasts. He's fansnotexperts.com. He has a lot of podcasts. One of his bigger ones, of course, is Stranger Danger. And if you're like me, you're going to really love this. He does comic books, novels, the show recaps for each episode. I mean, he goes all out for this thing. And he has already said, you know, once Stranger Things ends, there's always going to be new Stranger Things content. So we'll keep on doing the show as long as there's Stranger Things content. So that is amazing. 
another one, which is very important because actually today I don't have Disney Plus, but today is the day in which The Mandalorian comes back to Disney Plus. It has been a very long time. I believe it's been about two years now since The Mandalorian has been on air. But he has a podcast called Mando Man. I believe it's called Mando Man or Mandalorian Man. Sometimes he changes the name depending on the new thing. But if you just hit follow, it's on all different podcasting. It's a Star Wars podcast. Um, I haven't listened to it because I was going to with Andor, but I just didn't care about Andor, so I didn't listen to it. But he does all the live action Star Wars shows every single week. He'll be recording one. And then he has Geek Mentality. Now, Geek Mentality is kind of a free-for-all podcast with him. He has some very big events, such as Marcy McFly, which is in the month of March. He watches one Back to the Future film every single day and reviews it every single day. He has been doing this for three years. This will be the third year, so that means it's the third film. Um, I will probably be listening to a few of the Marty McFly's. I'm not sure I'll be listening to all of them, but yes, he has Marty McFly, but Geek Mentality is really his, it's probably his second biggest podcast because it's so big and vast. It's kind of like, it's almost like any cast, how, you know, if we're going to like focus, we focus on entertainment, you know, movies and music. Well, with Geek Mentality, it's more like movies and sometimes tv but very rarely tv but he'll do like these months where there's themes where he'll watch a new movie he's never even seen before he has joggist where is um it's in the month of august he watches the new jaws movie in the series each year he'll watch a new jaws movie for all the days in august and then in christmas time he'll do a sitcom christmas thing for the 25 days of christmas so Lots of fun over there. Um, But yeah, go check him out. Geek Mentality. He has a lot of new, you know, a lot of different podcasts. Um, That really seems to be his hobby. You know, he has multiple, multiple, multiple shows. All for different things. Which, um, you know, that's a very good and effective strategy. I honestly wish that I did that in the first place. Was, you know, make multiple shows. But I decided let's have it all here and kind of disorganize and uh, you know what? That's been working with you guys because 40 of you guys are subscribers on Spotify. So thank you guys. Um, but before we get into the Uno origin story, which literally will probably take less than five minutes, maybe even less than that, but I will have some commentary afterwards. Let's listen to what our dear friend, Mr. Strange Danger, had to say about my film, Any Cast Journey. Also, Mr. Anycast, Mr. Anycast, that's my Mr. Anycast theme song. Peyton, uh, he made a movie. He made a movie, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to get an IMDb credit, but I am technically in this movie. It's kind of, it's a really cool thing where it's like his journey of like wanting to create a podcast. I'm going to put a link to it in the show notes. Uh, and you hear a little, a little of yours truly in there. Uh, you may, you may recognize some of the audio in there. Um, and you may sing along. I'll just say that. Uh, but thank you, Peyton, Mr. Any cast, check out Mr. Any cast. And, uh, I, I appreciate that. Well, thank you, Mr. Stranger Danger for that very kind, um, you know, and very thoughtful, a review of my show. I wonder if I can get it on IMDb. Um, honestly, there are some student films on IMDb. I will I will look into that, and I will give you a credit. I will give Jeff from DW60 a credit. Um, I would have to give a, quite a lot of people credits in that um, IMDb listing, but yes, you would definitely get a credit. Um, I think the scene that I had you in was very important, you know, very important. If you guys have not checked it out, go check out the Anycast journey. Um, I'll link it down below. Um, it's kind of weird because some of you guys uh, don't really care to watch my films. Um, 
you know, and or order actually, I think it performed better in views. I'm not sure about how much people liked it, but definitely better in views because it was shorter. Um, which I'm, I'm honestly concerned. You guys, are you guys going to watch the lamp story? I mean, that script is kind of long. It'll definitely be on the 40 minute to probably 70 minute mark. So will you guys sit down? I know some of you will. I know some of you will actually put it on your TV and make popcorn and have candy and watch this documentary. Um, but, you know, I do know one project in particular that you guys will absolutely love. And probably in summer, you guys will be getting like very late summer. You guys will be getting a trailer more like August, you know, very late summer, uh, which is for the Any Haunts series, the anthology. I know you guys are going to really enjoy that because most of the episodes are short. Like, we're talking 5 to 15 minutes. Maybe even less on some of them. I'm not sure. But you guys are going to really enjoy that all. But now, let us talk about the very first board game origin story of our entire month. Uno. Now, I found some of this information. You know, there's an article. Um, I'll, If I can find it again, I'll link it down below. But um, I'm... I might stop every once in a while. Uh, actually, probably no. This is a very short paragraph. It's only like one paragraph. And I'll give some commentary. I'll talk about the impact Uno has had on me. and Because uh, I seriously do like this game. I picked board games that I do like and enjoy. Um, except for maybe like two of them that I'm not really sure if I enjoy them. I just thought, oh, these are very iconic board games that I'm actually interested in how these things were started. But now, it is time to learn how was Uno created. <clears throat> Uno origin story. Uno was created in 1971 in Ohio, USA by Murrell Robbins. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. M-E-R-L-E. Murrell. Morelli. Morelli. Let's call him Morell. Morelli. Murrell. Murrell. I think it's Morel. Morel Robbins. He made Uno in an effort to resolve a disagreement with his son over the rules of Crazy Eights. This explains to us why Uno is similar in some ways to Crazy Eights. But we also must acknowledge that Uno is not completely similar to Crazy Eight. There are some similarities, but there are also differences. And, um, this was actually pointed out in the article, but that is how Uno was legal to be a game. It wasn't a complete, uh, it was not copyright of Crazy Eights. It was a little bit different. Anyways, after he created this, Merle saw poten potential in Uno being a game in every household. Merle was a huge card game fan, and he saved up eight thousand dollars to order five thousand sets of uno now the first set he made by hand on the kitchen table and played it with his family and that's of course how he found out wow this could really be beneficial and very entertaining for a lot of people so he ordered the five thousand sets of uno and quickly he started to sell these out of his own barber shop and on the road to strangers he and his son saw the popularity of Uno and traveled the country selling Uno. They traveled in a car and trailer that read Uno, best game in America. After they sold out of the 5,000 game sets, they ordered 10,000 games. This time, they went to retail stores to sell their products. At first, small stores in Ohio held their products. In 1972, he sold Uno to International Games Incorporated, in which Bob Tezak, the head of International Games in Incorporated, took Uno, refurbished Uno's look, making it look more professional. After this, Uno boomed in the 1980s, and all card lovers wanted a set in their house. Then it went mainstream, and all people all over the world during the 1980s 
um, along with the card lovers than just typical American families that, you know, maybe on occasion would play a board game they wanted an Uno set in their households. So, naturally, big to toy companies saw the success of Uno and wanted a piece of that success. Bob declined many of these offers until 1992 when Bob accepted an offer from Mattel. Bob sold Uno to Mattel, and the rest is history. Yes, there you have it, folks. I don't even know how long that was. Probably like 90 seconds. That is how short the history of Uno is. You see, it started as an American dream type. Well, actually, it started as a civil dispute and a funny ending to this dispute of making a new game. And this game was fun. There were some changes, but this game was really, really fun. In fact, it was so fun that it was so it was super original and fun that, you know, they saw profit in this thing. So, you know, um, it's honestly a really cool story of how, you know, one little small idea, you know, I mean, $8,000, that was probably a lot of money in the 80s. Nowadays, I mean, it's still a lot of money, but, you know, on the grand scheme of things, that's nothing, you know. Um, you know, like if we heard a movie was getting made on an $8,000 budget, people probably wouldn't even go check it out because of how poor the quality of the film would have to be. Um, I mean, $8,000 is still great, you know, um, but $8,000, you know, that's kind of big back then. He took the 8,000, made 5,000 card sets. Um, I didn't even include, but I think he... I think he actually settled on the deal with Bob and his corporation and it said like he got 5000 up front and a 10 cent royalty on each set which if we're being honest a 10 cent royalty I would have bargained for higher if I was the dude. Now I don't know what they were selling Uno for back then but I would have at least wanted 50 cents because I'm thinking that back then Uno probably wasn't the most expensive game and 10 cent royalties no, I don't really know about that but you know he made the decision and that's great because we all get to enjoy Uno now Uno is definitely one of those games that I've played multiple times so many times countless numbers of times it's such an easy game to play whenever I would have family gatherings I would always play it with my cousins it's a very easy one to uh, introduce to the younger cousins of mine very easy to teach and very easy to play. But, you know, it's not just like young kids can have fun at Uno. All ages can get in on the fun. It's very easy. It's very fast paced and it's very just nice and fun. And it's still to this day is actually a game that, you know, teenagers my age, people my age and people in middle school and people in elementary school, they absolutely love this game. Like everybody loves Uno. If you see Uno in your classroom and you have nothing better to do, you are going to have the most intense Uno match of your life. I mean, it's not just Uno nowadays. Now there is um, Uno Flip, which is a really fun game. If you don't know, like you can flip the cards um, and they're double-sided cards and there's like special effects on them. Um, I believe there's Uno Dare, which I have not played. And then there's Dose. I wanted to get dose, but I was like, I don't know. There's more math with dose. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do math. Why would I want to do math? Like, why would I want to do more math on a weekend when playing a board game? I don't. But, you know, maybe someday I will get it. Uno is even so popular that people have made their own versions of Uno where you just kind of like play a version of it, like your own house rules um biggest known one is spicy uno um i've never played spicy uno but i've heard it's very intense and very 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 fun um so yeah you know uno is a big part of my life i'm sure it was a big part of your life and i actually hope you guys enjoyed today's like origin story um i will look at the schedule and you know usually i don't well sometimes i do tell you guys the future schedule but this one I did want you guys to know because this schedule I think is really fun. So 
on YouTube. I don't know if I'm going to do the YouTube, like what I'm going to do with YouTube, but I probably will do um, cards, you know, just cards. Um, an origin story on how did cards develop? What were they like? Now, there's a lot of different rabbit holes, of course, because once you get into cards, then it's like, oh, well, then, you know, you get gambling, you get poker, you get tarot, tarot cards, you get all different types of cards. And, you know, there's a lot of different things to uncover there. Uh, next week on the podcast, you guys can expect a podcast on Domino's, not the pizza company, but the game. Um, and then the 15th, you guys can expect a podcast on poker. Uh, and then the 22nd, expect one on Scrabble. Yes, Scrabble. I was running desperate on ideas because I, I put like checkers on the 12th for YouTube. I put chess on the 19th for YouTube. And I put Monopoly on the 26th for YouTube. Now, I might not do cards now that I'm thinking of it. I might just do my idea of doing a Monopoly boards iceberg, which I probably will do. And then I'll probably rearrange this stuff to be like, Oh, well, guess what? Come back next week and you guys can see some Monopoly. You know, that type of stuff. Um, I'll probably end up doing that. But then I realized, oh crap, we have a final Wednesday of the month. And that, my friends, is March 29th. And March 29th, we're going to have a very special and very fun. I don't know how it's going to go and I don't know how short it's going to be. Um, but I will give you some life advice. We're going to talk about 52 card pickup because I knew there was no greater game on earth to talk about than 52 card pickup. <sighs> that's, that's literally all I had. <laughs> that was my last option, but I'm hoping that this month is going to be really fun. I know it's going to be very fun, especially on any cast and any cast videos with Metallica Mondays. Like I am I am extremely hyped up about it. If you cannot already tell the amount of times I talk about Metallica Mondays to like friends, I'm like, oh, guess what? I'm doing Metallica Mondays. And they're like, cool. And I'm like, guess what? I'm doing Metallica Mondays. They're like, you told us that. I'm like, guess what? I'm doing Metallica Mondays. Like, I, you already told us this like five times already. Okay. No, but, um, you know, Metallica Mondays is going to be one of those things that I'm going to be very, very passionate and very, very uh, into. Now, as I said in the beginning, um, the 12th, I will be doing the Elevation Rhythm album. I don't know when the new one is coming out, so I want to do new Growing Pains. Uh, if the album is not out by the 19th, well, really by the 17th, because, you know, all music releases on Fridays... If it's not out by the 19th, then I will have a scheduled show where I actually, I actually might switch this up. No. Okay. So the 12th, no, the fifth, can I do this on the fifth? Yes. Okay. The fifth, I'm actually going to do an elevation rhythm singles. Now we're going to go through their discography throughout the years and look at their singles as much to 2022 last year they had a single that was not on the album and yeah we might even talk about some of the songs that will never be released i've actually got an official confirmation from some people that they will never be released a certain song i'm thinking of um so we might even go over that song but yeah that's probably actually what we'll do is the fifth will have that the 12th will have the growing pains album and then the 19th, if the album is still not out, we'll have something called Soul Session. Oh, wait, I'm, oh yeah, the 19th, we'll have something called Soul Sessions. Now, I'm going to talk about Soul Sessions. I have a Soul Sessions t-shirt. You might be like, what in the world is a Soul Session? It's a lot of fun is what it is. And then if it's still not out by the 26th, which I, I hope it's out by the 26th, so then one of these Sundays I can just be like, boom, here's an album review. Um, but yeah. You know, we're going to have a lot, I guess, the entire month of March, we'll probably have Elevation Rhythm um, music reviews. Not all of its album, but music reviews. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I hope you guys are too. We got a lot of musical content and a lot of 
met- or yes, musical Metallica content and some board game stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I know I did a lot of rambling and only 90 seconds of actually talking about the real topic here. Uh, maybe a little bit more because I did talk about my personal experiences with Uno and how much fun Uno is. So I hope you guys actually did enjoy this. And if you guys found it interesting, like I did, like I actually did find this interesting. I was like, wow, I was just looking up in class because I'm like, oh, crap, tomorrow's Wednesday. and I still don't have a podcast recorded. What am I supposed to do? And I was like, oh, thank, thank past me for scheduling it to be Uno. You know, I mean, I could have just said Uno at the beginning. Um, I was like, oh, great. This is what my old plan was. And boom. But I thought it was really interesting, you know, just it started out in Ohio, which I find it very hard to believe it started in Ohio. As you know, I don't really believe that Ohio is real due to um, all the found footage of the monsters in Ohio. But I believe what I want to believe. You believe what you want to believe. Um, I guess I do now believe that Ohio is real because I've seen some real footage, but it is very cursed in Ohio. And if you don't know what I mean, you can go and on your own conspiracy theory route. There's a lot of strange things that happen in Ohio. Aliens. uh, Monsters that are 42 feet tall. And more fun stuff. But until next time. Uno was created in Ohio and given to all of us. And let's hope that Uno is not the reason that the entire world is cursed. And come on back next Sunday for a more lighthearted and fun music review.